Hey, what's up, Plus Ultra fam? It's me, Plus Ultraman, and today we're here to continue the timeline in which Goku was trained as a crane hermit instead of a turtle hermit. Now, last part, we had a few mistakes. Thanks to Lightro Storm for pointing them out, by the way. The only real change is that no one has drank the Ultra Divine water, but fate water given to them by Korin. Other than that, the part involved Goku and the other Z-Warriors training and traveling together as a group, furthering Tien's redemption. At the end of the tournament, Tien does still come out on top, and he even decides that he and Chaozu would go back to Master Roshi with Goku, Launch being a big factor in him going, and everyone does still come upon the dead body of Krillin, killed by Tambourine. Goku is mad. Incredibly mad. He and Krillin weren't as close in this timeline as they would have been the original, but this is still a heavy loss to them. Their training had begun to make them bond. Fueled by his rage, Goku tries to run off, but he doesn't get very far, as Chaozu's psychic aura surrounds his body and stops him dead in his tracks. Master Roshi and the others begin to berate Goku, telling him that if Krillin was killed so easily, the killer could indeed kill him as well. Not to mention when Master Roshi learns that King Piccolo had something to do with the murder, he is even more adamant about Goku not going. He begins to inform the group on who King Piccolo is, and everyone's surprised when Master Shin and a battered Tao from the tournament appear and finish the story for the old Turtle Hermit. Shin then got in Master Roshi's face, asking if he knew how to use the Mafubo, because if he didn't, they were in very, very big trouble. Master Roshi finishes the story and reveals that Master Mutaito did not teach him how to use the Mafuba. This surprises Shin and everyone else and makes Shin feel a strange way. Goku, realizing that he's not going to get very far, especially having both his masters and all his friends urging him not to go, relaxes and saves what everyone strategize. He also notes on the Dragon Radar that the killer had gotten way too far for him to catch up with. Master Shin and Roshi put aside their differences and begin to try and come up with a plan to take on King Piccolo as the group all decide to head back to Kame House. Notably, Goku sports a very solemn yet angry look and sticks very close to Tien and Chaozu. When Tambourine makes it back to his father on Pilaf's ship, he's considerably more beat up from his fight with Krillin, as Krillin was stronger in this timeline, but he still came out on top and maintains his confident smirk and is given his next mission, to kill more of Earth's fighters. Back with the Z fighters, Bulma and the others begin to explain what the Dragon Balls are and why King Piccolo might want them to the Crane School members. They're skeptical, but then the news that the Earth's fighters are being killed comes on, and Master Roshi decides the group's next course of action. Chaozu's the fly to Korin's tower as fast as he can to get Sensu Bean, so Yamcha and Tao's injuries could be healed. That way they'd have more people to fight, and everyone would be able to heal up if injured in the coming war. Bulma's is set about making capsules to reserve the falling bodies like Krillin's while Launch is to get to the news station and warn the world's fighters, as well as telling them to lie low. Master Roshi, Shin, Goku, and Tien would go and try and find the person attacking the world's fighters, and as a group, try and put a stop to them. Everyone agrees with this plan and sets out to do their parts. Master Roshi and his group study the news to try and find the nearest fighter, waiting for Tambourine to inevitably show up to try and kill them, which he does. The group interrupts him from making another kill and take him on as a team. Master Roshi even goes all out into his buff form, seeming for the others to do the same. Tambourine is strong and puts up a pretty good fight, but inevitably falls to the superior numbers of his opponents, and the Z fighters begin to interrogate him. They get little to no information from him, but when he reveals that it was he that killed Krillin, he suddenly explodes, and the group look back in horror, shock, or even pride in Shin's case, see Goku with a furious glare and a smoking hand. It seems like Goku does have a bit of Crane Hermit in him. Master Roshi chastises Goku's rashness and bloodthirst, and the group decides to burn the papers the demon had used and fly back to Kame House, right as Chaozu returned with a big bag of Zensu beans, and a big guy. After healing an ungrateful Tao and a grateful Yamcha, Chaozu introduces Yajirobe and explains that he witnessed the big source from defeat and subsequently eat one of Piccolo's demons on his way back from Corinth. Chaozu thought he'd be a pretty big help, so recruited him to come fight the demons with him. The only thing Yajirobe asked for in return was food and some of the Zensu beans, and maybe even directions to Corinth after they defeated Piccolo for more. Everyone then notices the one-star Dragon Ball hanging around Yajirobe's neck, and this only sweetens the deal of him joining them. And after this, Launch and Boma return, having done their jobs. Master Roshi and Shin decide that the best way to take on King Piccolo, in light of not having the evil containment way, is to get the Dragon Balls and stop his wish, whatever it is. Then hopefully get all the Dragon Balls from King Piccolo and somehow make a wish to have Shinron stop the demon himself. Using the Dragon Radar, the group sets off to try and find the rest of the balls before Piccolo can, while Drum searches for them using Pilaf as a guide. After collecting five of the seven, Master Roshi comes up with essentially the same plan he did in the original timeline, except he has way more allies to work with this time. Tao, Yamcha, Tien, Chaozu, Goku, Yajirobe, Shin, and Roshi set a trap and prepare for Piccolo to arrive, unaware that he knows of their trap. 
Ken sees King Piccolo swallow the Dragon Balls and relays the information to the others, which gives Master Roshi cold feet. But then Master Shin takes control of the group, telling Roshi that with superior numbers they could complete their plan. Before anyone could even think of another move, Goku ran out into the clearing and yelled out to Piccolo to come and fight him, which the old demon agrees to eagerly. But as soon as he lands, he's pelted with attacks from six other fighters as they appear and begin to try and overwhelm him. Now King Piccolo with his youth bag had a power level of 260, but this is still him in his old form, so let's put him at a power level of 220 being equal with Kami. I'm pretty sure that everyone fighting for the Z Fighters right now is at at least 100 in power level. Yajiro may be a little bit under that, but I'm pretty sure Goku, Masaroshi, Shin, and Tien would be at least at 180, probably pretty close to 200 by themselves. So with this, they can probably overwhelm Piccolo pretty easily with numbers. Now Piccolo is stronger than everyone, but every time he's able to almost secure a kill, another warrior would attack and distract him. Even when he does land fatal blows, they would just eat a sense of being and be completely healed. Seeing a clear opening, Goku rockets forward and kicks Piccolo dead in the stomach, forcing him to spit up the Dragon Balls, where they are thrown over to Chaozu, who immediately flies off to go and summon Chinra. Now, Piccolo is furious and begins to gear up to use a super explosive wave, but is stopped dead in his tracks when he hears words that he thought he would never hear again, Mafuba, and then Roshi begins trying to seal him, shocking everyone even further. But sadly, the technique still does fail, and Master Roshi falls angering everyone, especially Goku, as he charges forward with even more ferocity. Just then, the sky darkens and Piccolo achieves his attack of destroying the air with the super explosive blade. This claims the life of Master Shin as well and injures everyone else. With his adversaries down, Piccolo angrily yells at Pilaf to use the Dragon Radar and find the Dragon Ball soon before Chaozu finishes his wish. He then hears a crunch and looks back in horror as a snarling Goku, fresh off a sizable Zenkai boost, surges forward once again and begins actually fighting him to a stalemate. Piccolo is now completely distracted by Goku and is horrified that a human child was able to fight him on equal terms. But then he sees something that chills him to the bone. Kami appears with Chaozu at his side, holding a new rice cooker, and then he activates the Mafuba and successfully seals the demon with the help of a young psychic. But Goku is still blinded by his rage and goes to attack Kami, just seeing him as someone who looked like King Piccolo. He's then knocked out by a black hand and held up by his tail. Kami and Mr. Popo then survey the damage with solemn looks, finding dead bodies and even more beaten up warriors all around while collecting the rice cooker and holding King Piccolo. But that plus soldier fam is where we'll be leaving this timeline off for now. This has been a very crazy timeline, seeing that Master Shen and Mercenary Tao have rejoined the group and seem to be having a more prominent role than they did in the original timeline. But what's to happen next? What is Kami going to do now that he's revealed himself and virtually saved the world? You ha just have to stay tuned and find out next time. Also, I just wanted to take this time and give a very big thank you to all of you guys. We recently hit 100 subscribers on this channel and I gotta tell you, I never thought that would happen. I'm really happy that people enjoy my content. It makes me realize that I gotta put more and more of my effort into these things to make them better and better. And it just, it means a lot to me guys. Thank you so much. Please keep watching, liking, subscribing. It, it really means a lot to me. It means the world. Thank you so much. Uh, see you next time and Merry Christmas. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And thanks for watching.